Hi, I'm Jonathan Schenker, and I'm a computer addict. I started using computers before I started walking. Computer games are just fun. I can't help but learn whatever's necessary to overcome orcs and ogres, arbitrage armor for gold, or code a few additional spells to tilt the odds in my favor. I guess it hasn't completely ruined me since I'm able to stand here and talk. <laughs> but more and more we see people playing video games spending hours a day on their computers. Unfortunately, it happens mostly after school and on weekends. Our next step should be to make educational gaming a significant part of every student's classroom education. Currently, the attitude towards video games is that students should spend less time playing and more time learning. But innovative software companies are already developing video games designed to teach students algebra equations while sliming aliens, demonstrate complex physics theories while dodging energy balls, fold proteins to solve puzzles, and even promote leadership, teamwork, and money management skills while fighting sorcerers online. There is no reason why we can't make most serious learning enjoyable it's time that online video games be integrated into the school curriculum to entice students to learn faster and more effectively than ever while having fun. There are already a number of games designed to teach, but the fact that well-designed computer games can teach better than other current methods is why they are so ideal for school use. Students learn at different speeds and with different learning styles. Yet teachers are only human, and when faced with large classes, can't possibly teach each student according to individual pace, individual focus, and individual ability. Good interactive games can already be adjusted to control play style and speed, can be kept up to date with the latest information, and can be personalized to appeal to each player, all the while repeating and reinforcing core knowledge and prior skills. We all know the cliche that experience is the best teacher. Yet I've also heard it said that experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. <laughs> the key point, we can learn a tremendous amount from failure. Yet failure in a classroom is humiliating and a single major test failure can trash a class grade for the year. Science teaches us that only by regularly testing the limits of failure can we experiment and learn. We gamers regularly crash and burn. We learn and remember most from our spectacular failures. Hundreds of failures don't discourage or embarrass us in our virtual worlds as we explore, experiment, and learn, because we only take score of the successes. <laughs> Even after we succeed, we return to try again, striving for better times or more effective strategies until we reach the best possible scenario, or as we gamers call it, an epic win. A good interactive game can require and rely on the huge benefits of failure, as well as the rewards of success. In short, interactive educational games can and should assume the main responsibility for hammering home fundamental and complex concepts in an engaging, even addictive way, at a student's own speed and without fear of embarrassment or failure. I'll give you a few examples. Young kids who have mastered hundreds of Pokemon, characters, traits, interactions, and evolutions might as easily master the elements and chemical bonds if offered in an interactive game environment. Physics? Portal by Valve Software integrates virtual reality physics into a first-person shooter game, 
The player deals with complex concepts, such as the conservation of momentum and gravity-based acceleration in a futuristic environment solving complex puzzles to survive. Teamwork and leadership? Massively multiplayer online games, or as we gamers call them, MMOs, can help develop team building and social skills much the same as organized school sports programs, without the need to ostracize meek and geek. Games such as Blizzard Entertainment's World of Warcraft develop deep social ties with other players immersed in the game. These games promote leadership, cross-member allocation of responsibilities, and team member alliance, as well as help develop computer skills and speedy touch typing, since quick communication among players is fundamental for success. With all of these great reasons to use video games in schools, what could possibly be holding them back? The first barrier is perception, that video games are unproductive and violent. Like many spectator sports, sitcoms, and movies, some video games are unproductive entertainment. But that's a common part of our culture. Even early interactive games often offered lessons in focus, logic, and problem solving. The kids you know who waste time in online worlds today, cruising Second Life or joining guild battles in World of Warcraft, are also likely to be the same students who understand how to navigate and exploit our nearly infinite net resources. As for violence, one upside is, when it comes to teaching history and current events, we are well equipped to simulate the bloody nature of battles and wars we seem unable to live, with, live without. Maybe some animated realism will influence future leaders where centuries of textbooks have failed. But actually, a large number of highly successful games have no violence at all, focusing instead on interactive puzzles and planning, with leading current examples including Bejeweled, Peggle, and The Sims. Interactive simulation games are already being used to train professionals, from astronauts and auto mechanics to surgeons and farmers, though they don't call them games for sake of reputation. Another barrier is resources. The best that today's schools generally offer is a smart board in class and a small computer lab with outdated machines. Yet we're bombarded with netbooks and smartphones. We now have Apple's amazing iPad. Google and RIM are threatening cheaper tablet computers. And last month, we learned that the Indian Institutes of Technology and Science have developed a $35 Wi-Fi touchscreen computer tablet to be distributed to college students next year. With hopes of getting the price down to only $10 soon. This is not science fiction. The tools are here today. We read about systems that train soldiers for complex battles, drone surveillance, and pinpoint bombing. I think we'd get far more world respect and stability by developing and sharing systems that teach fundamental reading, writing, math, and science. Today, the internet is our high tech in schools. And while it's a wonderful source of information, schools are only using it as an encyclopedia, a reference. But these new games that immerse players into the laws of chemistry and physics that model historical events and cultural diversities, that promote complex solutions to difficult problems, can create a new world of awareness, preparedness, and confidence. With these new games, learning becomes fun, even addicting. And addiction to education is not a bad thing. Grasping the gaming opportunity to develop sharper young brains that have been educated to create innovative solutions, to solve problems individually and as teams, and to overcome massive challenges is our next step. Once we all insist 
that educational games be added to the teaching process, more effective and enjoyable than anything we have today, we will finally experience our epic win. Thank you. Yeah.